The International Red Cross is one of the world's leading humanitarian organisations. It led the humanitarian response in the 20th century's two world wars. It's the organisation which is at the forefront of protecting political and security detainees. And the International Red Cross is able to achieve a degree of access to conflict and proximity to victims that many other organisations can't, such as in Syria today. Well, in many of today's conflicts, we have affirmative sovereign countries who resist neutral and impartial humanitarian assistance. We have armed groups denying access and not wishing neutral and impartial and independent assessment of needs. Carving out a humanitarian space uh, for principled action is, I think, the single most important challenge that we are confronting today. In 1965 in Vienna, the Red Cross met to formally adopt its fundamental principles. Humanity, impartiality, independence, neutrality, voluntary service, universality and unity. They are the raison d'etre of the movement. They're both a statement of its values and its ethos, but they're practically what guides everything that the Red Cross does in the field. On its 50th anniversary, we've brought together academics from the arts and humanities, practitioners not just from the ICRC, but from many other aid agencies, and indeed a number of people who straddle that divide in order to reflect on the last 150 years and what we can learn from the past in terms of the challenges facing those principles today. Humanity and impartiality represent basic goods. They are the values, they are the goal of what we do. The principles emerged through practice and in different periods different principles were at stake because different challenges were confronting humanitarian actors. If you are partial and delivering on one side, doors close on another side. So you learn that impartiality is critical. If you do one step too much in going beyond purely humanitarian needs-based concerns, you learn that you burn your fingers with the political objectives of uh, warring parties. So it's through the practice of warfare, through the practice of delivering humanitarian assistance, that those principles and the significance of those principles has emerged. The fact that we've gotten bigger is actually also in response to the principle of humanity. We are trying to respond to more needs in more places. So we've divided the conference into five historical periods. The first period covers the start of the movement in the late 19th century through to the First World War. I am representing the first panel, which goes from 1863-4, that is the beginning of the Red Cross, until 19, let's say, 18. The First World War was extremely important because it was the first proof that the ICRC was extremely important for everybody. Until 1914, I would say, the biggest issue, the biggest challenge was the ICRC's very existence because states were very, very happy to claim that they were um, civilized and they were humanitarian until war because as soon as there was some war, these uh, countries decided that, well, what was important wasn't humanitarianism, weren't vict victims, but was victory. I think that these humanitarian principles are as critical, um, as difficult, as they ever were. So Panel two focuses on the turbulent and traumatic period between now, the two world wars, um, looking at it from a geographical perspective, covering Indian humanitarianism, a conflict perspective, the Spanish Civil War, and a religious perspective, looking at the Quakers. And also bound up with that period is the huge problem of large-scale refugee flows. Very interestingly, the humanitarian principles and very specific to ICRC had some challenges where we started to see, for example, during the Spanish Civil War that the ICRC engaged with and, and, and provided humanitarian support, 
was a time where the committee in Geneva was quite conservative and perhaps was more oriented towards the nationalists as opposed to the Republicans, Republicans being the face of communism. And there was some concern that perhaps they really weren't expressing or acting with neutrality or impartiality. What's interesting is in their experience on the front line of providing humanitarian aid, doing detention visits, they came to be able to express their concern equally and impartially about both sides and the violations that they experienced. Humanitarianism's search for purpose is what I want to talk about in the 15 years after Biafra and the tension between uh, a search for justice uh, and the idea of neutrality. Panel three in which I've been involved is of course the period in which the fundamental principles are adopted and codified in Vienna in 1965. It's also the period where we experience three huge geopolitical changes, decolonization, the Cold War and globalization, all of which are entangled with each other and have significant repercussions for the fundamental principles. And this panel has a further importance because it sees the emergence of significant forms of non-Western humanitarianism. Panel four is looking at the decades of the 1980s and 1990s, the decades of so-called liberal interventionism that included conflicts in Iraq, Somalia and Bosnia. This was a period where humanitarian organisations became entangled with UN peacekeeping forces and state military forces and that posed profound problems for the fundamental principles. Very insightful comments were made and, and it was and full of eye-openers and in particular for like the so-called practitioners who also need to hear from historians about, about the context in which those principles were developed and, and applied. For me what's important that we, we, we leave the principles where they need to be and they have a place uh, but not to sanctify them to the point of not discussing how they actually uh, enable operations. And this conference has the potential to do that. Panel 5, which is looking at 9-11 and after, brings the past into the present. It's looking at today's conflicts in Afghanistan, in Syria and the Yemen, and the humanitarian challenges and crises that they've produced. Panel 5 raises perhaps what is the biggest question of all, and that's the challenge for each generation to renew that principle of a shared humanity to underpin humanitarian response. I, I was just listening to a podcast from, uh, with, with, with a historian, Margaret Macmillan, who, was, who, who just came up with a book about history and why history is important and what's fascinating about history. She said many things, but one of the things she said was that Bad history is when you try to use it to predict the future. Good history is when you can take it, I'm paraphrasing terribly, but good history is when you can use the past to help you formulate better questions to ask about your present and your future. And so I think taking this moment uh, to reflect on the principles, this 50 years of it, allows us to maybe ask better questions of where we go from here. It was really important for the ICRC to host the public event last night to debate the principles because it's only if this conversation really involves practitioners of humanitarianism, people who spend so much time in those messy, dirty, chaotic crises and the people who support them here are really part of the conversation that we're going to be able to wrestle with some of the most fundamental issues which get in the way of us really being able to help people in need of assistance. That's what the principles are about. It is quite important to bring together both academics and practitioners into a conversation. I think this is a great start for, uh, for not only this debate and this meeting, but for forthcoming meetings to build on it. It, it creates a, a great opportunity for cross-pollination of ideas, uh, but also for reflection of our own work. Finally, we conclude in a final translational panel that tries to draw insights out of those five periods for the challenges facing the fundamental principles today and in the future. And now it is really time to come down to earth and to see what we can do 
with these discussions. The whole point of this conference has been to explore and to try to establish whether the fundamental principles are still fit for purpose in the early 21st century. That's no small challenge, and it's no small challenge for two reasons. The first is that the very identity of the International Red Cross is so heavily invested in the fundamental principles, so it's perfectly understandable that the organisation is both respectful and sometimes protective of them. And the second reason is because the context in which those fundamental principles have to be interpreted and applied are constantly shifting and changing. And nowhere is that more so than in the type of conflict that we're facing today in the early 21st century. Failure to respect international law and principles are at the origin of massive displacements uh, today. If only law and principles would be respected, if only humanitarian organisation would have have easier access to people where they are and where they are exposed. If only uh, we could engage with the armed forces, with the armed groups, in order to have the, the conduct of hostility rules respected, we would not be confronted with the kind of refugee flows with which we are confronted today. The things that we've heard at this conference have enlightened our ideas about instrumentalization of humanitarian politics, the motivations behind humanitarian action. So whether we actually change our practice because of this, perhaps we will, I think it's too early to tell, but do I think that it has changed our way of understanding what we do? Absolutely. <laughs>